Now, just a minute, it seems to me the next sensible question by any journalist in the room would be, Mr. President, how is that any different from appointing common sense judges that realize that our rights are de derived from Poseidon? I mean, what, what is, it's not like someone in the third century actually figured out that the biblical God exists, but Poseidon doesn't. You know, this is not, uh, this is not data that we have. Okay, this obviously would be the last question that journalist would ever ask. Okay, it's, it, we can't call a spade a spade because it is because of this taboo around criticizing religion. And I would argue that religious moderates are really the greatest offenders here, the greatest force propping up this taboo. Another problem with religious moderation is it's actually intellectually bankrupt. When you just consider for a moment this notion that you should respect other people's beliefs. Where else in our discourse do we encounter this? I mean, when was the last time anyone in this room was admonished to respect another person's beliefs about history or biology or physics? We do not respect people's beliefs. We evaluate their reasons. If, if my reasons are good enough for believing what I believe, you will helplessly believe what I believe. I will give you my reasons, and, and reasons are contagious. That is, that is what it is to be a rational human being. Respecting another person's beliefs never enters into it. And it just, just appreciate for a moment how easy this is to see when we just change the subject from God to some mundane, grandiose claim. This is actually an example from my book. If I told you that I believe that there was a diamond buried in my backyard that's the size of a refrigerator, it might occur to you to ask me why. If in response I gave the, the kinds of answers you hear from religious moderates, the, the answers that describe the good effects of this, of, of believing as, as I do. So I said things like, well, um, this belief actually gives my life a lot of meaning. Or, I, I wouldn't want to live in a universe where there wasn't a diamond buried in my backyard that's the size <laughs> of a refrigerator. I mean, it's pretty clear that responses of this sort are deeply inadequate. They're worse than that. They, they are the responses of a lunatic or an idiot. I mean, I, by, by responding in that way, I would have disqualified myself for any position of responsibility in a first world society. Except you, you change the subject to religion, to the moral demands of an invisible superintelligence, to what happens after death, and all bets are off. Then you can say anything you want. Another problem with religious moderation is that it's not only intellectually bankrupt, it is theologically bankrupt. Because the fundamentalists have actually read the books. And they're right about them. These books are every bit as intolerant every bit as divisive as the Osama bin Ladens of the world or the Jerry Falwells of the world suggest. And I'm not necessarily equating the two of them in moral terms. But there is, these, once we dignify the claim that the Bible or the Quran, conspicuously, is, is, is a book that is a communication that is fundamentally different from any other book, be it the plays of Shakespeare or the Iliad. The, these books are not literature. They are the best books we have on, in moral terms. Once we dignify those claims, we are really hostage to their contents. I mean, the creator of the universe does hate homosexuals. If you read the Bible, at the very least, homosexual men Gay sex is an abomination. It, it is spelled out in Leviticus. It is, it, this edict is ramified in Romans. It's not, many Christians imagine that the New Testament fundamentally repudiates all the 
barbarism that's found in the Old Testament in books like Leviticus and Deuteronomy and Second Samuel and Exodus. That's not true. You can take Jesus and half his moods and get some really beautiful ethical precepts like the golden rule. But Jesus also said things like in Luke 19, anyone who doesn't want me to, to reign over him, bring him before me and slay him before me. Okay? I guarantee you that the inquisitors of the Middle Ages who were burning heretics alive for five solid centuries, they had read the whole New Testament. They had read the Sermon on the Mount. They found some way to square their behavior with, with the ministry of Jesus. It's not an accident that the great lights of the church, people like St. Thomas Aquinas, and St. Augustine, people who are still taught to every freshman in every great book seminar, in, certainly in my country. In Aquinas' case, he thought heretics should be killed outright. In Augustine's case, he, th he thought they should be tortured. Augustine's argument for the use of torture actually laid the foundations for the Inquisition. Okay, well, we look back on these events and we think, well, you know, people being burnt alive scholars being tortured to the point of madness for speculating about the nature of the stars. We look back from our, our perch in the 21st century and we think, okay, these societies were just unhinged. I mean, these were lunatics. It's not true. This, this was totally reasonable behavior given what was believed. Heresy, just think about it. If there's something that your neighbor can say to your child that is so spiritually wayward that it could put your child's future in jeopardy for eternity. Okay, that, that is much worse than the child molester living next door. This is, we're talking about an eternity of suffering because your child has learned to call God by the right name or think there is no God. Okay, so the stakes really are enormously high. And the... And the Another problem with moderation, incidentally, is moderates, and certainly secularists, tend to be blinded by their own moderation. It's, it's very difficult for moderates to actually believe that people believe this stuff. It, it's, it's difficult for a moderate. When you see on the, on the news broadcast, you see the jihadist looking into the video camera saying things like, we love death more than the infidel loves life. And then he blows himself up. Religious moderates, not fundamentalists, re religious moderates tend to think, well, no, no, that really wasn't why he blew himself up. You know, it doesn't have anything to do with religion. This is economics, it's lack of, of educational opportunities. I don't know how many more engineers and architects have to hit the wall at 400 miles an hour for us to realize this is not simply a matter of education. It, the, the, the truth of our circumstance is quite a bit more sinister than that. It is actually possible to be so well educated that you can build a nuclear bomb and still believe that you're going to get the 72 virgins. That's how balkanized our discourse is, and that's how, that's how easily partitioned the human mind is. I, mean, I can tell you, there's no place in the curriculum of becoming a scientist where they tell you, you know, this is bullshit. Do you stop believing it? So to wrap up, I see uh, my time has dwindled mercilessly. Um, I just want to say that, that whatever is true spiritually and ethically about our circumstances, there are no doubt there are spiritual truths. There are spiritual experiences human beings can have. And there are ethical truths. Whatever is true about that has to transcend culture. It has to transcend our cultural differences. There's a reason why we don't talk about Christian physics and Muslim mathematics. Because these truths actually, an experiment run here and in Baghdad actually works both places if it's teasing out something fundamental about the nature of the universe. That is true ethically. That is true spiritually. And the, and the only thing that guarantees that our human conversation is open-ended is a willingness for us 
to have our beliefs about reality updated and revised by conversation. Because when the stakes are high, we have a choice between conversation and violence, both at the level of individuals and at the level of societies. So my, my pitch to you is really that the end game for civilization is not political correctness and tolerating all manner of absurdity. It is reason and reasonableness and an openness to evidence. Thank you very much.